Talk about, get your telephones. We'll talk to Lee, who's in Rochdale. Dinky do, Lee. Dinky do. Dinky do. How are you? I'm very well. Right, just before I start, have you, have you um, lost your cold and you, you're coughing? Yeah, that's you're all sneezing? gone. That's so all. My, um, my friend David called you from Rochdale a few weeks ago. I'm fine, mate. Talking about Quentin, Quentin Quisp. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm just phoning about the uh, the new Irish Parliament. I might be changing the subject a little. Go on. But I think it's rather incredible that, that two known Irish... Um, IRA sympathisers and hold such key government positions in the new Irish Parliament. Well, I think you're you're always going to have some connection with the IRA, aren't you? Yeah. Because that's really what it's all about. Hmm. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I mean, could, could he not, like, use his power as the Education Secretary to, like, manipulate the education system into his round his way of thinking, both Catholics and Protestants. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, because Martin McGuinness, I mean, he was carrying an IRA bomber's coffin at the funeral. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, that's one of his countrymen. Yeah. Now, and and you've got Jerry Adams on the other hand that's been complaining mm-hmm. about his car being bugged. Mm-hmm. Now, if I was the British government, I'd bug more than his car. I mean, to what means is Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness going to, to use, like, the the political strength uh, to achieve their ambitions. Well, I mean, you've got to achieve their ambitions. That's what they're hoping to do. That's why this peace process has all come about, because they had their ambitions and their dreams. Yeah, but these people, you know, they've bombed, like, major cities and towns in England. Yes. They've been part of it. Yes. The spokesman. Yes, and that is dreadful, inexcusable behaviour, but... What they were trying to do was see if they could bring the history alive to the British government at the time. Because if you go over to Ireland, Mm. right, you will see in sort of every marketplace almost of every little town and village, yes, you'll see monuments (laughs) where the the, um, British in the past tried to um, down insurrection and killed Irish people, right? Mm. This was in the past. Yeah. Yeah. The same way that the English killed a lot of the Scots and and what have you. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we have rather a checkered history in these areas, and it says, God save Ireland. And what happened is that so many Irish people, particularly Jerry Adams and and Martin McGuinness, they were brought up with a more sort of ghetto-stunted view of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yes? Like, for instance, if you had been asleep as a child and suddenly your front door got kicked in in a terraced house, yeah. you know, and uh, this rather rough voice said, Right, get up, you <laughs> You're right? Yeah. And you were absolutely innocent of anything. Mm-hmm. And it was just a routine search yeah. by troops. Mm-hmm. And then your mother busts into tears and then your father says to you, Go back to bed, son. Someday we'll sort all this out. But moral issues of sensibility. Oh, hold on a second. I'm just going to take a short break. Don't go away. Okay. Scotty McClue's Late Night Phone-In. Have you phoned yet? Think you do. The Scotty McClue Late Night, night Phone-In. Oh, one two. Right, Scotty McClue's megaphone in. Now then, are you yeah, still right. there? Yes. Now then, give us your chats here. What point were you actually making? The point I'm making is that if you breed somebody in the, the way that you want to breed them, whether it was Hitler with his blonde hair, blue eyes, the perfect people, or wh- whichever country does it, Lenin, Stalin, or whichever, if you've got an aim in life, if you can't achieve that aim at that particular time, you can lead the way to, to make a perfect society in 20, 30 years' time to come. And I personally think that Jerry Adams... Well, what's um, wrong with a perfect society? Nothing whatsoever. Uh, uh, the, the thing that's wrong with it is, it might be a perfect society to you. Yeah. Um, but it's not a perfect society to anybody else. Like, if you could breed children in, in, 10, in 10, 20, 30, 40 years to, to breed them into your way of thinking... But that's what, that's what the church has been at for... 500 years, 1,000 years. Right, well, we're not talking about that. Yeah, yeah, but no, because... Yes. No. Yes, I mean, I because... Be- no, I've, I've spoke to you before about gay people and Quinton Crystal was on when don't yeah. start sneezing again. Yeah. No, yeah, I won't start sneezing again. No, no. Um, if you if If people have a plan to program people into their way of thinking and other people are backing them up to, to breed people into their way of thinking, in, not in their lifetime, maybe not. But that happens, this goes on all the time. 
This is yes. why you've got British people and Irish people and American people and Russian people, because we're all bred into a certain way of thinking. When it gets to violence and when you're, you're bombing people and you're destroying towns, you're destroying cities, when it gets to violence, then I believe that that is the wrong way about it. I do. Well, of course that. it's the wrong way about it, but look, but look, what were we doing with NATO? What were we doing with Saddam? What is Saddam doing to his people? What was Hitler doing to his people? What is uh, Russia doing in, in, in Grozny? Uh, in, in no, Chechnya, in, you know. Yeah. But they've got the, the reason, what happens a lot of the time now is like in Chechnya with Russia. They've got, I mean, listen, listen, David, David, look, you're not going to be able to sort the problem out. We know that from 400 years of history, right? You're not be going to be able to just rerun the tape and not have all that. It has already all happened. No, but... Right, so what you've got to do is find a solution. You have got to find a solution, yes, and you have got to talk about it. And you have got to solve the solution. Yeah, I quite agree. And the, 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 the thing in, in Ireland now, it is being solved. They've got their own power or whatever. What I'm saying is now, could they not manipulate that now into their own way of thinking? I mean, the two people, the main people that are... Well, I would about, imagine that's what they're going to do. Well, I should imagine so. Because that's but, what you do do. That's what it's all about. Politics are the art of the possible. So in, in 50... 100 years t t down the line, 100 years time down the line, not only have we got a si the situation that we had, we've solved that situation, but in the, the end of the day, we're going to make it even worse than it was in the first place. In what way? Because you've... you've <sighs> I'm going to have to go for the news in about five seconds, right? Right. But I, I, I want you to stay on. I'll stay on. Because yeah. I want to see where you're coming from here. Right. Right? We'll okay. get to the bottom of it yet. Okay, do. Is that all right, mate? Yes, yeah, certainly. All Don't right. start sneezing. Hey, I'll try and not start <laughs> sneezing. Right, there we are. Stay where you are. Okay, folks, uh, 11 o'clock coming up, of course. If you're on the line and waiting, stay there. We will get you all on. You're listening to Scotty McClue's Megaphone In, and we're live on Century Radio, the UK's number one. And uh, before the news, we're talking to Dave from Rochdale. Dinky do, Dave. Dinky do, Scotty. Now, nah, mate, where did we get to? I don't know. I was hoping you'd tell me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, you obviously have a problem, yes? Well, I wouldn't say it was a problem. No, but you're, you're interested, you're concerned about the bugging of uh, Jerry Adams' car. Um, I wouldn't say I was concerned about actually bugging his car. I'd bug more than his car. I'd bug his house and his lapel and his everything about him. Why would you do that? Well, if you go back two or three years ago, we wasn't even allowed on British television to even hear his voice. Well, that was Mrs. Thatcher. It's more than two or three years ago. It's about eight years ago, I think. Because I remember discussing it on the radio at the time. Well, time flies. What I, I feel very suspicious about these people now that are being put in the, the position of power that they're in. Could they not manipulate that power? If they can manipulate it the way they have done now, you've got people that have been known linked with the IRA, known carrying bombers, uh, coffins and... Yeah, but you see, you see, to be honest with you, the IRA is part of the whole process of of Irish history. It's it's an integral part of the um, the troubles. Yeah, I quite agree. And the and the 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 uh, the uh, terrorism and the mischief making and the trouble making and all that. The IRA has been with us. I mean, for goodness' sake. There was a bomb in Oxford Street in London in 1940, and the same day that they, they buried, you remember John Buchan, the author? Yep. You know, Lord Tweedsmere. Well, I mean, you know, the, the day the, 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 of his uh, memorial service, there was a bomb in Oxford Street in 1940. And, you see, you've got to remember that the Irish government actually outlawed the IRA. What it is, what I think is this. What has happened with... This Irish, we've actually given in, and we've, no, we've given concessions. And no, no, listen, I think you're coming at it from a, you're coming at it from a very stereotypical angle, right? Let's look at it from another way. Right. And this is, this is just me showing you the other side of the mirror, if you like. Here are, are people like Jerry Adams, Martin McGuinness, and all the hundreds more, Right, oh. hundreds and thousands more who were brought up um, under this sort of regime. Right. Right, of yep. British troops going into Ireland to, or going into Northern Ireland, going into Ulster to um, 
take control of a difficult situation. At the time, it was a time bomb. Right? Yep. Now, rightly or wrongly, the situation was handled in that way because the British troops were the agents of the British government. Right. There has been a uh, huge cries for home rule in Ireland for years. There were the Phoenix Park murders. You go way back to the 1800s, the 1700s, the 1600s. The yeah, William of Orange, yeah. The 1500s. Right. Right? When, uh, uh, you know, and during that you had Britain at its most imperial, colonial and empirical. And what many people don't realise is at one point in the late 1700s, Britain and Ireland were almost bankrupt together. Right. Yes? Mm -hmm. So Ireland, which at that time was, was mainly, like Scotland, a peasant nation. Right. Yes? Yep. Um, was carved up for the British aristocracy. Yes? Yep. So there's a long, long history of oppression. Mm -hmm. Now, successive British governments up until, well, really the Thatcher and major governments, the Thatcher government, shall we say, mm -hmm. right, um, still fought their, their historic, for their historical position as they saw it, right? Yep. Now, remember that you didn't have the emancipation of of Catholics until when was it the eighteen hundreds? I don't really know. Obviously, you're more clued up, Scotty. Right. Obviously. Well, that uh, was that was that. Let me just give you a couple of points because there's a lot of little known facts because it's obviously not taught in British history. It's very much a them and us situation. Now, then the 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 British view changed. That really, um, for instance, Edward the Eighth who abdicated met Prince Charles when Prince Charles had just become Prince of Wales. Right. And he said that, y you know, you will always have a job with the hardened Ulstermen. Now, this was in the 20s and 30s, yeah. when he was Prince of Wales, Edward VIII, right? So, yeah, you know, that was on one hand. Then, obviously, there was a view, I won't say... You know, I won't tie it down to a specific party, or whatever. No. That really, with the general decolonization throughout the globe of Britain, with the ending of imperialism and empiricalism, right? Um, Ireland must be returned to the Irish people, but it had to be a peaceful Ireland. Yes? Yep. Now, one other thing I'm going to tell you, and then I want you to come back. The I Irish history would have been different, probably, had Michael Collins lived, right? Michael Collins was shot in 1922, yeah, in an ambush. Yep. Now, uh, Eamon de Valera then uh, became the Prime Minister. And Eamon de Valera was the Prime Minister uh, all throughout the war and what have you. Mm -hmm. Now, Ireland was accused of... Um, giving information to Germany, and that's how British submarines were sunk and all the rest of it. Now, what is not so well known? Ireland couldn't defend itself because there was a secret pact between Ireland and Britain. And all German communications were routed through the BBC and through British intelligence. Yep. And none of this could come out at the time. It's only starting to come out now. And Ireland, de Valera received a communication from Churchill saying, um, you know, you could not have done more for us without being act without publicly claiming that you were on our side. Right. So Ireland was a tremendous help to Britain. Yeah, uh, I'm not during, I, Ireland fed Britain during the war. You see? So there were all these things, and a lot of that has been swept under the carpet and forgotten and misunderstood. So and does that give Ireland, or Northern Ireland, the right to bomb Manchester, Liverpool? No, nobody Liverpool. has the right to bomb anywhere. But these are desperate people to bring about change, to get noticed. Right. I don't think anybody has the right to bomb anywhere, because there's nothing solved by any of that. So I'm I'm okay then to say, um, okay, a rebel without a cause, or 
I'm I'm okay to say to you then. I've got a cause that, I'd, like I spoke to you last time about coincidence, because I'm gay. Then I can go and bomb wherever I want to go and bomb uh, to make people sit up and listen. No, That's because no, because because from that point of view, nothing is actually gained by this, right? The bombing and the terrorism brought about nothing, right? But right. enlightened people starting right. to say, "Put a stop to this." And let's talk. Right, I quite right? agree. Yes, I quite but agree. the bombing brought about... Make no mistake, it wasn't the bombing and all the rest of it that actually brought this to the table, because the bombing has been going on since the, 19, the early 1900s. Yep. Yes? But it was this tit-for-tat thing. Yes? Yep. Like the British were executing Irish terrorists. Uh, just before the First World War. Right, and Lloyd George got in touch, uh, you know, and said, look, this is causing very bad publicity in Britain. And in fact, De Valera just escaped execution by somebody saying, we'll do up to that one this morning, and then we'll stop at the school teacher. Well, it's obvious, Scotty, that you're very much... Uh, clued up more than I am. I look at the situation now rather than going back in the... Well, it's, you see, for instance, if you came up and punched me in the face, right, I would instantly... Scotty would never do uh, No, 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 but I would instantly... I would instantly <laughs> probably punch you back. And that's the problem, because I wouldn't know why you'd punch me in the face. Now, if you'd punch me in the face for stealing your partner in the nightclub, I might well, understand. <laughs> No, but what annoys me is the fact that these people that was, like you say, eight years ago, nine years, ten years ago, seven, six years ago, these people that was defying everything about uh, moral issues and everything, and now the people that are in the Irish government, surely they can manipulate that situation to their own means. Yeah, but that, that doesn't matter. That's up to politics. At least they are sitting at the uh, round the table and they are going via the ballot box well, and not the bomb and the bullet. Well, as, the, as, as everything contradicts itself, <laughs> in a way, actions speak louder than words, so... Where yeah, but I that? also say that we are having enlightened British politics as well. No, I don't. I, what I think is happening is that people want peace so much that they're willing to um, back down and accept whatever is on the table. Because, do you know... No, it's not that, No, listen, you're is, not accepting whatever's on the table. You must so you, remember, there are years and years and years so you've of got talks and discussion. Me, because you can turn me down, I can't turn no, you down. No, I'm not turning you down. But I haven't the, turned you down. The British people, I think that the people on the British Isles and I'm talking about England, Scotland and Wales, not Northern Ireland or Southern Ireland. The people, I'm not talking about the UK, I'm talking about the people on the British Isles, apart from Northern Ireland and Scottish Isles. They seem to want peace more than the people that are actually in Northern Ireland. No. We're, we're fighting no. more. No, that's not true. Oh. That's, no, that's a complete misnomer. No, if you go over, I don't know if you've been over to Northern Ireland recently. Well, if you I go over and actually Northern. talk to the people, I think you'll get a, a, a different view from what you've just come out with. Well, if you go and talk to the if you go and talk to the people in Derry, you go and talk to the people in in uh, in, in Belfast. Or then why does it take people like Martin McGuinness and Jerry Adams for them people to realise? Surely. They don't want their their way of thinking. Surely to God. What we what we what what way of thinking you know, is? Hang on a second. No, hang on a second. What way of thinking is their way of thinking? This thirty year rule we've got, like the government. After thirty years, you've got to um, tell everybody what you did thirty years ago. Do you know the the rule I'm talking about? Of course. Right. I think in thirty years' time, me and you should have this discussion again, and I think then perhaps I'll. Uh, be wrong in a few points, and I think you will be as well. Because I think. At, at well, what points? Of, what points do you think I'll be wrong in? At the end of the day, really, basically, everyone's peace wherever they are. But you wouldn't, if it was Hitler that was now saying we want peace in Germany or wherever he is. Would you trust that person to do to do that? Well, or you see, you see, for instance, in, for in, instance. In, in, well, all right, you've, cho you've 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 chosen you've chosen Hitler there, right? Right now. Um, 
Hitler had one or two good ideas. He had superb ideas. Right, and Hitler also was doing it, uh, you know, a lot of what he did to uh, release his people from oppression, as he saw it. Mm. He'd been terribly badly treated. I don't know if you've read Mein Kampf, My Struggle, but he'd been terribly badly treated by the establishment. He was a corporal in the army. He was gassed. He, he was in poverty. He saw uh, Jewish control of the money, and everywhere he turned, the people with the money were uh, were Jews. You know, were Hasidic Jews. And um, he, uh, uh, you know, thought this is wrong. He wanted to redress the balance. But the whole thing got out of hand. The whole thing completely ran away. But I have to also say that had Churchill not been a consummate warmonger, mm -hmm. he may have done a deal with Hitler sooner yep, and yep, saved an yep. awful lot of death. Yeah, yeah. I can't argue, Scotty, you tied me in knots. You see, that's the whole problem. It's all to do with how big is the mind of the politician and the very fact that we've got to jerry adams and martin mcginnis around the table with david trimble right yeah and, and 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 john hume and uh and, and all the others um you well, know have they have they backed down on their views it's to, not to a question listen table. it's not a question of backing down there's always got to be compromise to have progress exactly but are they compromising to get the well, everybody has, everybody has to compromise because yeah. one, well, side, one side wants, you know, um, a, a, a Protestant, Unionist, Loyalist, Northern Ireland run by Britain. That's where one side were at, at one point. The other side want the British out of well, Ireland exactly. completely. Is it, is, it they want the is it reverse psychology where, yeah, we'll sacrifice now to gain in the long run? No, I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. If people didn't get on and do some serious work, because these are all clever men and women, you know, they are not nitwits. Yeah, but can they be trusted? Can they be trusted to do what they say they're going to do? Well, can any, can, hang on a minute. Can any politician be trusted to do what they say they're going no, to do? No, you've got to put this, obviously. But you see, but having on, said on, that, look on at... This, on this occasion... <laughs> when they've said things before and things have happened like the Manchester bombing or whatever and they've said yeah we'll relax the arms and everything else do we really believe what is going to happen well I think so if you don't you see if you don't believe then you're no further forward you can forget it for instance if you don't believe that it's okay to be gay then you can go into a deep depression right. and end up in the nut house right because well, you talk, feel you've got they all, something wrong with talks, you like they talk but then there's the saying, action speak louder than Hey, words. listen, I'm no, sorry, but I would rather there was talking going on than bombing. I quite agree. I quite agree with you. So, I mean, never, ever fault talking. No, I, I, but are people talking in this situation for their own means at the end of the day? Whether well, it's I hope so. Or, we'll yes, I know. hope so. I hope so. Well, because everybody's got their... There are several vested interests, right? But I think people have got to wake up and see that economic development is the main interest. For a start, war, maiming, killing, bombing, bulleting, all the rest of it is not popular anymore globally. Well, and no, anybody no, that goes in, that's but. why... No, 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 it's been popular at times. That's why you had uh, uh, leaders like uh, Jomo Kenyatta, who was a wonderful president of Kenya, was originally involved with the Mau Mau, right, in well. the 1950s. Right, and Jomo was a wonderful president, a lot of stability throughout Kenya and throughout East Africa. Right? Um, so so that, that sort of thing. Now, what we need... In Ireland and in Britain now is stability. I agree. That's the whole what, thing. There, and remember that Jerry Adams and Martin McGuinness were brought up in Ireland. They are Irish. They are Irish the people. Favorable. They do belong what I'm there. Is, well, they haven't got a, a good track record, and that's what you've got to go after, isn't it? You've well, got well, to, well, You can only go after the track record, and you've got only got. It, it might be fine that they're going to do everything that they want to do but you can only go off somebody's track record and you've got to go off that 
and that's the only thing that can lead you into the future. Yeah, well, who... What, no, what they've left behind in the first place. Yeah, but listen, listen, what they blundered into in the early days now has been translated into... So you into, can say, Scotty, you sell yourself personally, never mind the radio Yeah, but wait a minute, now has can been translated... Just a minute, though. 100% that no. you're sure that they have got genuine reasons to get peace and get everything sorted out. I think they have got genuine reasons to have peace, yeah, can yes. Can you say personally, yes, I can. 100%, yes, I can. do you have that little yes. niggling feeling? No, I don't have any niggling feeling, and I'll tell you why. Because the reputations as statesmen are at stake now. Right. Because they're right? more in the public eye, so they'll be allowed... No, it's not even the public eye. Right? It's the fact they're reputations as statesmen because, you know, the bluff has been called. Right. And their reputations as statesmen. And there's still no decommission of arms. Well, I mean, you see, if it was me, and I, I don't want to get involved in this because I'm not a politician, I'm, I, we're not a political program. Can I see about it? Uh, a nerve there. No, no, I was just going to say to you, if it was me, I would say, what is your problem? And they'd say, we're not giving up. And I would say, well, put them in a museum. All we're saying is don't use them. Right, fair enough. So it's okay to bomb as long as the... the excuse me, uh, excuse me, are you... Have you completely lost your brain tonight or something, no, Dave? No, what do you mean, so it's okay to bomb? When did I ever say that? No, you didn't. Thank you. No, you didn't. Now, come on. Right. So, right, less I'm of it. I mean, you know, you know, if I'm if I'm going to talk, right, with a grown-up voice, then you yeah. should as well. Yeah, it is never it. okay to bomb. I made that clear. Right, okay, I do apologise. Right. There is never an excuse for right. violence. Well, I'm going off the line now. I'm going to have some more to think about now. Right, and then come back on once and you've had a think. The lady that was on last night, yes. he was trying to explain to her about the year 2000. Yes. The easiest way to explain it is, when you're born, you go 12 months without a birthday. That is the easiest way to explain it. <laughs> Are you with me? Think you do. See you later. See bye. you, pal. Bye. Bye now. Right, there you are, folks. You can give us a call. Uh, I'll give you the telephone numbers.